Here on this Tobacco University video, we're going to be looking at a product you might be familiar with called Root Shield and see how it relates to cannabis production. So in this video, I'm going to go over using Root Shield for cannabis production and give you some studies uh, that looked at investigating the effectiveness of this particular product. So first off, here is a reference poster, and here's the long link. You can also see in the description, link to all resources. But this is also the poster uh, where they looked at uh, fusarium in particular with some other biological controls. And I'll provide you the general summary. So first off, what is root shield? I figure I should just first off describe what it actually is. And it does have active ingredients, and this is there's root shield and there's root shield plus. What does the plus stand for? Well, it contains two versions of trichoderma, two different strains of trichoderma here. And what is trichoderma? It's an organic biological uh, fungicide with dual active ingredients, uh, in the sense that we have those two strains there, to prevent a broad spectrum of root diseases and promote a healthy root system. Uh, it's registered for use in the United States, except Alaska, REI of four hours and a post-harvest interval of zero days. This biological control agent has been reported to be effective against a range of root pathogens. And in this study, Root Shield Plus WP, which stands for wettable powder, was applied at a rate of 0.02%. So looking at biological fungicides in general, the evaluation of, bio of biological agents against pathogenic fungi can be challenging due to the environmental variability that naturally exists. So you have to look at these studies and kind of see if they apply, um, see what conditions had occurred. So we're looking at comparisons, uh, they're focused on a single pathogen, may seem limiting for a grower's viewpoint, but it does offer some degree of useful information. And hopefully you find that with this video. So fusarium, I'll look at the oxysporium and proliferatum. Uh, uh, these pathogens have been isolated from all stages of plant growth, from vegetative cuts to mother plants that typically show as wilt systems. So grower may recognize, I know it's a pepper plant, but may recognize these wilting systems. If you look on it on a, through a microscope, this is what the fusarium would actually kind of look like. You're associating with a root. If you were to plate it on a petri dish, this is what it may look like. So the treatment's impact on disease, looking at the study presented here. Root shield containing trichoderma reduced infection. And we can see that located right here. Negative control means a control plant that was grown without any disease. And then a positive control is one that was inoculated with disease. And you can see how these different products compare uh, and how they are definitely um, show different degrees of effectiveness. So what's the conclusion uh, based on the cannabis data provided there was that root shield did produce a notable level of disease reduction. However, regalia produced a statistically significant level of disease reduction. And just to go back to that for a second, this is where regalia was, so it was shown in that study. Based on this data, regalia may be a better option, but root shield would still be po uh, potential for offer some protection, and it may offer reduction in other diseases. So it should be considered as a potential biopesticide when it comes to cannabis production. Remember, this would be root applied and drenched as well. Found another article here looking at the trichoderma uh, and kind of presented here. Again, I'm provided just a general overview. This was looking at growth and development of CBD content of hemp. So the study specifics, uh, we're looking at the study aimed to investigate the effect of trichoderma hysterium inoculation on agronomically and quality characteristics of two monoecious hemp varieties, uh, Fedora 17 and Felina, planted in 12 liter pots filled with soil and 8 liters of compost. Look at the study for more details on exactly the materials and methods if you want to learn more information. However, the product they used was trichoderma hysterium and was a commercial product. Um, all the details provided here with the um, concentration of that product as well. In a greenhouse pot experiment was conducted in a complete randomized design of two treatments of the trichoderma hysterium, both at a low and a high dose, represented by T1 and T2. The split applications were carried out through fertigation at um, 10 and 30 days after sowing. So they sowed this in the ground, so the plants 10 days after, and the next one was 30 days after. And here we see the control where no amount was added, T1 and T2, where they basically doubled the amount of applied fungal spores. So yield characteristics related here um, to the CBD content. Yield characteristics and CBD content was affected by different trichoderma hysarium treatments in hemp varieties for the Fedora uh, 17 and also Felina. So if we're looking here, percent CBD, 
uh, we are seeing a, a change and these letters represent statistically different uh, levels there. And you can pause the video and take a look at the bud dry weight, the bud length, the, in the bud compact index, the percent CBD, and also the CBD yield expressed in grams per plant. So what's the conclusion of their study? If you looked, you can go back and pause it at the data, but the conclusion was the highest values of plant height and dry weight were noticed with T2, especially in the Felina uh, variety. Trichodermia serum positively influenced characteristics of inflorescence, such as the number, fresh weight moisture, and compactness in both varieties, while the dry weight length and dry yield of inflorescence was not improved. Finally, the fertigation of uh, Trichoderma zerum in hemp plants was beneficial at increasing cannabidiol or CBD content, especially in the elevated treatment levels. So again, here's just comparison the control to the treatment levels. Something based on this data you may want to consider adding to your grow. Uh, run a control, run a trial yourself, see if it does make a difference, but at least there's some data here to support that it might be worth the investment and labor to incorporate into your growing operation.